All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for your presence this morning. Grateful for this opportunity for us to come together, to join together one with another on this Wednesday morning that we might uh, be able to share in devotion and prayer together. So good to hear your voices um, and so good to uh, be on this call this morning. Uh, The book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 26. Uh, Just one verse, verse 3, Isaiah 26 and 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Sisters and brothers, peace is defined as freedom from disturbance, a state of concord or tranquility a state of quiet or calm, a state of harmony or security. And with everything that's going on around us, everything that happens to us, and everything associated with us, I would venture to say that we all could probably benefit from some peace. Somebody could benefit from peace of mind, the absence of mental stress, mental anxiety, having to worry. Some of us could benefit from peace within, a sense of inner security, inner strength, and inner stability. Somebody could benefit from spiritual peace, being confident in knowing that the Lord of the universe is by our side and is available to us no matter what we may be going through. Some emotional peace, a state of calm, a state of serenity, that uh, place of tranquility. Some relational peace, when we're able to live in harmony with one another. Others, financial peace, achieving a sense of security and financial freedom from debt and any other form of financial bondage. No matter what our lot may be in life, we all could use some peace. Now, the area or areas of life that we may need peace in may differ from one person to the next, but rest assured, we all need peace. And even though many of us believe that we have it all together, we could use some uh, reassuring. No matter how confident we may be, we could all use some encouragement. No matter how independent we are, we could all use some assistance so we don't have to be burdened down. We could all use some hope and strength and calm and freedom as opposed to anxiety, insecurity, fatigue, and worry. And for those of us who desire some form of peace or just want to maintain their peace, I recommend this text this morning from the prophecy of Isaiah. In this 26th chapter, we see the prophet rehearsing a song of trust in the provision of God. He sings of how God will restore Israel and how Israel will once again walk in righteousness and peace. He shares that after the coming judgment for their sin, a day will dawn when Israel will be redeemed and returned and reestablished. They'll be rewarded with a peace that comes only from God. And in light of all that is going on in and around the world today, we too need some reassurance and a word of encouragement regarding peace. Even though some may be going through right now, even though others may be suffering right now, we could all use some reassuring that there will be glory after this. There will be victory after this because the word of God gives this promise of peace. And I stopped by on this prayer call this morning to share with somebody under the sound of my voice that we can experience um, assurance even in the midst of the storm. We can experience peace to help us sustain in the storm and then will lead us out of the storm. God can and God will turn some things around. God is able to bring us out. We, too, can be renewed and restored and rejuvenated and reestablished. We, too can have God's peace. Isaiah says, you will keep him in perfect peace. Stop there for a moment. What a promise uh, that Isaiah gives us in this text this morning. Perfect peace. And this perfect peace is not something you get from the outside, but this perfect peace is provided by God. God 
is the giver of this peace. And it's not just ordinary peace, but God promises that we can have perfect peace and be kept in a place of perfect peace. You see, in the Hebrew, the term perfect peace is actually shalom, shalom. This shows us how in Hebrew, repetition communicates intensity. It isn't just shalom. It's shalom, shalom, or perfect peace. If uh, one assurance isn't enough, God follows it up with another. Peace is doubled to denote the certainty of it, the enjoyment of it, and the continuation of it. Peace with God, the peace of God, peace experienced from God, peace at all times and under all circumstances. This perfect peace means an undisturbed peace, an undamaged peace, an unmoved peace, and an unbroken peace. In other words, it's a peace that can't be shaken. It's peace that can't be obstructed. It it can't be disrupted. It's a peace that's without discontinuation or disconnection. Um, Persecution can't prevent it. Sickness can't stop it. Poverty can't deprive it. Bereavement can't bury it. Peace, peace is God's perfect peace. You see, there are some folks in the world who think that they have peace, but it is not perfect peace. It's not a peace that passes all understanding. It's not a peace that is beyond what the world can give. It's not a peace that the Lord keeps us in. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Isaiah says that we can be kept in this perfect peace. We can be maintained in this perfect peace. We can be sustained in this perfect peace. We can be hidden, concealed, guarded, housed, protected in perfect peace. Songwriter said it this way, my life is wrapped up. My life is tied up. My life is resting in the Lord. Then the chorus goes on to say, I'm in his hands. My life is resting in his hands. My brothers and sisters, what the lyrics suggest is that in the hands of God, we can be kept in perfect peace. Whatever comes our way, we can be kept in this peace. Whatever the difficulties are that we face, we can be kept. In this peace, whatever the storm may be, we can be kept in this peace. That's why he admonishes us to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build our hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. And if we hold to his hands, we can experience this perfect peace. You see, the background of the text is that the inhabitants of Judah had been led captive to a far distant land. They've been subjected to reproach and to scorn. They've been stripped of their uh, property and their honor. They have been reduced to the condition of prisoners. Yet Isaiah tells them, and he tells us today, that they can and we can still be kept in perfect peace. And somebody on the line this morning needs to know that you too can experience being kept in perfect peace. Isaiah says, by keeping our minds stayed on him. Sisters and brothers, we've got to get our minds in check. Our minds have to be focused on the right thing. So often, we focus on our problems. We focus on our circumstances. We focus on our issues and our predicaments. We focus on what's going on in the news and what's going on and happening around us. We focus on the negative things in society and the evil that's taking place in our society. Those things will inundate our minds and our thoughts 
until those things are all that we think about. But our minds need to be stayed not on stuff, not on circumstances, not on the world, but our minds need to be stayed on God. When we keep our minds stayed on, settled upon, and established upon the Lord, then we can be kept in this perfect peace. Lord, I don't know uh, what's going on around us, but my eyes are stayed on thee. Being kept in this perfect peace is a matter of the mind. Though it's a matter of our entire being, it starts with the mind. That's why the Bible says that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we are not to set our mind on earthly things, but to set our mind on things above. My brothers and sisters, this Christian life is not an unthinking life of just doing or experiencing, but it's about thinking. And we're to set our minds uh, essentially on the Lord. If we want to be kept in perfect peace, our mind needs to be stayed on God. If we want to be kept in perfect peace, then our mind needs to be sustained, leaning, depending on our God. If we want to keep uh, this mind, um, uh, keep our minds in perfect peace, that if we want to be kept in perfect peace, then our minds need to be made up, no turning back. If we want to be kept in this perfect peace, our mind needs to be steadfast, uh, immovable, and always abounding. If we want to be kept in perfect peace, then our mind needs to be certain and established and resting in the Lord. To have this peace, our minds can't occasionally come to the Lord. It has to be stayed on him. If our mind is stayed on ourselves or on our circumstances or on our problems or on uh, the people in our lives or anything else, we can't have this peace. If our mind is stayed on our capabilities, our capacity, our strength, our power, then we can't have this peace. If we spend our time fretting and worrying, which in effect is saying we don't trust God with the outcome of what we're experiencing, we can't have this peace. If we keep on stressing and trying to be in control of the situation, we can't have this peace. Our minds need to be stayed on the Lord. Well, preacher, with everything going on, how do we keep our minds stayed on God? Isaiah says, Here's the key to having our mind stayed on God. We can do it if we trust him. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. We almost always keep our minds stayed on whatever we're trusting in. When we trust in our money, then that's what our mind will continuously be stayed on. When we trust in our job, then that's what our mind will be stayed on. When we put our trust in our stuff or in our family or in our connections or in our relationships or in anything else, then that's what our mind will be stayed on. But when we trust in the Lord, we keep our mind stayed on him. Maybe Someone needs to be reminded that God is still in control. (laughs) And if we keep our mind stayed on the one that's in control, then we can experience having that peace. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Proverbs admonishes us, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And lean not unto our own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. When our mind is stayed on the Lord, we won't trust any other path. When our mind is stayed on the Lord, we won't lean on anything or anyone other than the Lord. When we trust in the Lord, we don't have to try to figure it out. 
we can simply let God work it out. When we trust in the Lord, we can be led by him, directed by him, guided by him. When we trust in the Lord, we'll be sustained by him. When we trust in the Lord, we'll be established by him. When we trust in the Lord, we'll be upheld by his righteous right hand. When we trust in the Lord, we are promised to be kept in perfect peace. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. My sisters and brothers, this perfect peace is possible when God is our focus, when we make God our focal point, when God is at the center and the core of our trust. Matthew Henry says, whatever we trust the world for, it will last only for a moment. But those who trust in God shall not only find in him, but shall receive from him strength that will carry them to that blessedness which is forever. Can I tell y'all, sisters and brothers, stop looking to the problems and start looking at the problem solver. Stop looking at the sickness and start looking at the healer. Stop looking at the, the thing that you're going through and look at the one who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think. And though the storms keep on raging in our lives, and sometimes it may be hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured. As we keep our eyes upon the distant shore, we know, uh, we need to know that he'll lead us safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in our lives, our souls must be anchored in the Lord. And no matter what comes our way, we will experience God's perfect peace because our minds are made up, our souls are anchored, and we will trust in the God of our salvation. Isaiah says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask if uh, Sister Barbara Thomas um, uh, would would uh, unmute herself, and we'll be led in prayer this morning. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, Pastor ma'am. Wallace. First yes, of all, ma'am, I, can hear I you. want. Okay. First of all, I want to thank my spiritual sister Nellie Suggs who invited me to be a guest in St. John's Missionary Baptist Church where I could hear the word of God from Pastor Wallace. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you so very much. But also Isaiah 54 says, he awakens me morning by morning, waking my ears to listen like being taught. And I thank God for the teaching of that Proverbs Uh, book of fourth chapter of wisdom. I remember being in school in the elementary grades that I was taught one plus one was two and one more would be three. But as I grew in the word of God, I began to learn one plus one plus one is three. Oh, father, no, it's not three. It is one, one God. One son, one Holy Spirit. When God let let his son come to us, his son did not leave us alone. But within our hearts, we have the Holy Spirit for his guidance and leadership. So I thank God for all of this, the many blessings that I take for granted, the blessings that I, I, I just don't even know how to say so many of them. Day by day, he looks upon our hearts, and we thank him for the air that we breathe. We thank him for the, the unseen dangers that the, all that he encamps the angels around us for protection. 
Lord, I, I, it, it gets chills in my bones when I when I think about all of your your provision for us. Oh, my bones begin to shake and with thanksgiving from my heart, Lord. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for those loved ones who are they're not dead. They're just resting. They're sleeping and looking for that earthly, heavenly home where there's no more pain that they can walk around and we can see when he comes back again, all of our loved ones, Lord. Thank you. We just say thank you, thank you, and a thank you, Lord. Just thank you for all of the blessings that we just take for granted. I just can't help it. I just can't help it. My bones are shaking right now for the blessings that you just store upon me. And not only me, but all of you who believe in the our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know he loves us. We know that when Satan tries to attack us, we're not alone. We're not alone at all because he has us in God's hand. <gasps> oh, God, excuse me, I love you. Excuse me. God, you have us, and I'm so thankful for it. Mm. Please excuse me. I'm just so excited <laughs> about the word of God. And again, I just want to say thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you for loving us. Thank you for your undying com- compassion. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you. And on behalf of all of us, we come to you now to say thank you. <laughs> if you believe that our Lord is with us this day, let this whole spirit of this line just say thank you. Will you join me in just saying thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving us. Please join me. Amen. 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 Amen.